Well, hey everybody, welcome to New Life Church. We're glad that you joined us on our Mother's Day Sunday. We're excited for what God is doing in and through your lives, and we're excited that today we get to celebrate our moms, because without them, we wouldn't be here. Okay, I can be honest with that, so yes. So today, maybe you, yeah, you need to thank somebody. Maybe your mom is still physically here with you, and you can, you can show her love and appreciation or maybe there's been somebody in your life that's been a mom to you and you can just show gratitude and appreciation to them. Whatever it is, we wanna celebrate the moms in our lives, whether physical or spiritual moms. We just, we're excited uh, just to celebrate with you today. Today we got, before we get into this, we got a few things that we wanna just um, make you aware of, okay? And so the first thing is this, if you haven't got connected with a group yet, our groups are going and you wanna be connected in one of them. The other opportunity is through our men's or women's Bible study. And you'll find all that information on our app or online, or by scanning the code that's on the screen for our groups, you'll find out more. It, it, just get connected. Some of the best spiritual growth happens in these communities. Why? Because we're studying the Word of God together. There's accountability, there's this iron sharpening iron moment in those times. And we want you to be a part of that. The other thing is this, if you wanna help out, we have a serving opportunity coming up. Um, each year we help out with Lincoln Elementary School and Adrian. And this year we're doing their uh, 5K and fun run again. And we would love for you to help us just take care of the race. So really what that means is we show up at uh, like early, like 7.30. We put you on different corners on the course and you basically just direct the runners around. You encourage them as they continue to run. And it's just a great opportunity just to serve the school and this fundraiser that they're doing. And so if you want to be a part of that, you can actually find that in our uh, events area in our app. Um, and you can uh, sign up there so we know that you're available um, on Sunday, or not Sunday, on Saturday, May 21st. So we hope that you can be a part of that. The other thing is this, if you want to give this morning, you can do that. You can do it through our app or online. But we just, we're excited to see what God continues to do as we move forward in obedience. And one of those areas is it's through our giving. We've, we've seen that as people continue to be obedient, all the different things that God is doing and opening up for us to be a part of. And so thank you for being a part of that. But today, we're going to start by just singing a, a song with Blake. And it's not just any song. This is a worship song. This is time to worship. And so Blake's just going to worship, and he's inviting you to join with him. So this morning, would you take some time? Would you sing with us? Just wanna bless you. If you are 
are a fire and set me a place and I will be a living sacrifice all my heart and soul to glorify I offer Well, I don't know about you, but these last couple of weeks have been kind of really challenging. You know, as we look at a different way to do life, anytime we talk about something different, doing something different, it means that we have to change some things, do some things differently. And I mean, really even starting it off with this first week where we talked about our spiritual health and how our spiritual health is so important, even so important that Dallas Willard called it the hinge on which everything else hangs. And so like last week, we just had this hard conversation about physical health, you know, and and just uh, really, I mean, you can go back and go how much physical health is really impacted by our spiritual health and how all these things kind of work together. And really, as Dallas Willard said, it's the hinge on which all things hang. And I think today what you're going to find out too, as we look at our mental or we look at our minds, like how important all those different aspects are to our mental health as well. And so today, really what I want to do is I want to talk about our mental health in a way that just says, okay, can you like, can we... Can we just come at it from this place of like, what does God say about our minds? Last week we talked about the why. Why is physical health important? And we talked about how um, everything that God created has a purpose. And so how our bodies were bought with, and they were a high price. God paid a high price for my life and your life. And how our bodies are the place in which we worship from in Romans 12:1, where it says, offer our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God for this is our spiritual act of worship. 
And today we're gonna we're gonna pick back up, but we're gonna talk about our mental health. I'm gonna start back with a quote, and I know I've been quoting this guy Dallas Willard for a lot, but he's really one of the guys that talks about this a different way more than anybody else. And he talks about our spiritual disciplines and how important just being a disciple of Jesus is. And and so it's different. It's gonna it's gonna require that we do things differently. And so he says this in his book called The Great Omission. He says the first and most basic thing that we can and must do is keep God before our minds. This is the fundamental secret of caring for our souls. Our part in thus practicing the presence of God is to direct and redirect our minds constantly to Him. To direct and redirect. You see, Paul says in Colossians 3, he says, we need to set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. You see, when we talk about mental health and we talk about a different way to do life and we talk about being healthy in our minds, we have to understand this one simple verse in Colossians that Paul um, tells us. He says, set our minds on things above. Direct our minds to where it needs to go and then redirect those things. When it gets off, redirect. So direct and redirect. Keep God at the the front of our minds. Keep Keep Him before us in everything that we do. Direct and redirect. You see, over the last few months, I've been reading again the book of Joshua. And at the very beginning of Joshua, Joshua gets this call from God. He's beginning to understand that Moses is no longer alive, that he's dead, and now God is using Joshua to lead these people into this promised land, this land that God promised them. And so he gives Joshua these very strict instructions. And it just simply says this. We're going to start in verse 3, and he says this. First of all, I'm going to start with promise. He says, I promise Um, that I will be with you just as I was with Moses. So wherever you set your foot, you will be on the land, and I will give you that land. From the negative wilderness to the south of the Lebanon mountains in the north to the Euphrates River in the east and the Mediterranean seas in the west, including all the lands of the Hittites. And no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you just as I was with Moses. And here's the thing I want you to see. I will not fail you or abandon you. I will not fail you or abandon you. But he says this, verse 6. And this is where I really want to say, Graham. Be strong and courageous for you are the one, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess the land I swore to their ancestors and I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. So he adds the word very there, right? Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning neither to the left or the right. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. And this is what I want you to listen to. Meditate on it day and night so that you be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You see, when it comes to our minds, what we have to do is what Dallas Willard says. We have to keep God at the front of our minds. We have to direct and redirect. We have to do what Paul says and to keep our minds set on things above, not these things below that keep us distracted so many times, especially in life right now. Okay? Can we be honest? Like really, these last couple years have been really hard to keep our minds focused on things above because everything around us is demanding so much attention. Like, and not just so much attention, but it's demanding that we give an answer or it's demanding that we do something to change something, to make sure something happens that we're not sure if it's going to continue to happen. Or it, and it's just this, it seems like chaos. And so our minds are as in much chaos as our physical bodies are. And so we're really wondering what is happening because the things that were comfortable before now maybe aren't so comfortable anymore. And there's a key in all of this that Joshua is talking about. And God puts it right in the middle of verse 8 where he says, Meditate on the Word of God day and night. Okay, why is he saying meditate on day and night? He's saying keep it at the front of your minds, keeping my instructions at the front of your mind so that you can keep your eyes set above and not below because below is going to get you confused. It's going to keep you walking in circles. It's going to keep you wandering around. But he says focus in. Meditate on this Word day and night. You know what's interesting about this passage of Scripture? It's like continually say under your breath the word of the Lord. There's so many promises, so many scriptures, so many things. Even in here, be strong and courageous. That's a word for you and me. For the person that's sitting here who's cowering, who is scared to get out and do stuff because of what the last couple years have been, 
Be strong and courageous because the Lord is with you wherever you go. I can be strong and courageous because the Lord is calling me to do this and he will be with me wherever he's called me to go. Like, do you see that? We're directing and redirecting our thoughts. It's so important. You see, the biggest part of us having a healthy mind comes by renewing our minds. You see in um, Romans 12, 2, last week we went through Romans 12, 1. This week, Romans 12, 2. Paul says this, he says, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. How do we renew our mind? Here's four easy things, okay? Here's what I want you to see. Renewing our mind is possible when we remember, remember. When we remember the words spoken, when we remember the the things said, when we remember the things that we've written down, when we remember his words, meditate on it day and night, don't forget about it. It's when we forget about those things and we get away from the God who bought our lives with a high, with a high, paid a high price for our lives, the one who has a purpose and a plan for each and everything that he's created. When we move away from him and the truth that is found in him, we get distracted. But he's saying, remember these things. You see, there's a great book by um, the late C.S. Lewis. It was called a book called The Screwtape Letters. And if you've never read it, I would, I would encourage you to do this. But there's this little line that comes out of this conversation. And, and it simply says this. It's funny how mortals always picture us putting, and this is like the devil or the enemy wanting to like um, trip up the the, the Christian, okay? And he's saying this, it's funny how mortals always picture us putting things in their minds. Oh, the, the devil made me do it, right? That's the, the trick. But it says, this is interesting. This is what C.S. Lewis wrote. He says, in reality, our best work, meaning the enemy's best work, is done by keeping things out. The enemy's best work is by keeping the word of God, the promises of God out of your mind by moving you away from those things, by keeping them out of your mind so that you forget about the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, the God who has a history that goes back way before us, a God who knows everything about us, a God who wants to, to use our lives in a, in a way to affect his kingdom on this earth for now until eternity. Like he wants us to get our minds off of what are important. He wants us to get our minds on earthly things so that we miss the heavenly things that he wants to do in and through us. So he's saying, remember, and remember this, don't say the devil made me do it, because oftentimes probably what the enemy is trying to do is to get you to forget the thing that's most powerful in your life, and that's the promises of God. Second thing is record. Record these things. If you read in the book of Joshua and you keep going through, like you see Joshua being like challenged by God to remember all the things that he's, he showed them, that he's taught them. Remember the promises that he gave to Moses and he's given to him. And he says, remember these things. But as he goes through this process and he leads these people over into the promised land, he records these things. And how does he record it? He records it by doing a thing that many would call an altar of remembrance. So there's this moment when the people of Israel are passing over into the promised land where Joshua commands one person from each tribe to go and grab a rock from the middle of the river and take it and set it on the shore and assemble this kind of altar to remember what God did on this day in this place. That he parted, right? That he parted the Jordan River so they could walk over on dry ground. And this day will be remembered, and you'll remember the one who parted the waters, the one who led you into this promised land, the one who will lead you to conquer this land, the one that he's given you, the one that will allow you to possess the land that you set your foot on everywhere you go. He says, record it. How they did it was by setting up these moments to remember what God has done. Maybe in your life, if you're struggling right now, maybe you need to set up some remembrances of what God has done. You see, in my personal like study at home or at home on different shelves in different places or in the office or hanging on different walls I'll have little things that just remind me over and over of who God is like I have this sign you know that um, actually it's was in the office here but it fell off the shelf and broke but I still have the sign the frame just broke but um, one one Sunday morning Sayla was in a class this when she was really young and she wrote this song I got is mighty to save and so she wrote up this little phrase and she wrote a person on the bottom of it. And it was just a reminder to me, and I've kept it because it was so precious, it was so sweet, that just God is the one. He's the one who's mighty to save. He's the author of our salvation, right? And it's just a remember, 
to remember. I have a, a, a jar full of sand. That jar full of sand is to remind me of how precious God's thoughts are about me. I have things positioned all over the place. I have a picture on my phone that reminds me of, of a certain thing that I want to remember. I have um, a screensaver on my computer that um, reminds me to pray for different things. Like it, I just have things different places so that I won't forget. But what, what am I doing? I'm recording these things so that I can remember that God is calling me to set my minds on things above, not below. Third one is review it. Like when I see that jar, like right on the other side of this camera is this jar of sand. It's, it's a review, it's a re, like helping me understand that, man, God's thoughts about me are more numerous than the sands that you and I see on the sands of the shores of Lake Michigan or the shore at the ocean and these places like his, they're more numerous than the sands of all around this earth. Like how amazing is that? You see, Second Peter, Peter says this, he says, everything that goes into this life of pleasing God has, a miraculous, has been given miraculously to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who has invited us to God, that's Jesus. The best invitation we ever receive. We are also given these terrific promises to pass on to you. Your tickets to participate in the life of God after you turned your back on the world corrupted by lust. He's saying everything you need has been given to you to keep your mind set on things above and to get rid of all the things that are below. And the last one is this, remind, remind. And you see it throughout the songs, or, or Psalms. I remind my soul. I remember. Why? Because if we don't remind ourselves, we'll forget. And what do we remind ourselves? We remind ourselves that all that God has done throughout history, not just in my lifetime, but remind myself of what He did with the people of Israel through Joshua. What he did by delivering a people, by using a, a lady named Esther. What he did through the prophets, as the, even some of the prophets never even saw like a massive transformation in people's lives, but they continued to share the word of God when the people were far away from God. It just I, it reminds me of how good God is from one generation to the next. It reminds me that he's faithful today, just as this, or yesterday, and he's faithful today, just as he was back then. Like I remind myself of those things, but I also remind myself of the history that I have with him and all the things that he's done with me and through me and around me and how good he's been and how faithful he's been. You see, he has a history. So how do we start? How do we allow God to renew our minds? How do we, it just simply comes through this and we talked about this at the beginning of this, how uh, this different way we talked about repentance. And repentance is really just simply this. It's a change in the way that we think. It's seeing things from a different perspective. That's why Paul says, don't conform to the patterns of this world. This world has a pattern, has a beat, right? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's a different way to do life. There's a different rhythm to this life that we're called to live. You see, there's this great quote by a guy named Bill Johnson. Maybe you sing some of the songs from his church, but he's a pastor of Bethel Church and Bethel Music. We've seen a lot of their songs, right? But I love this quote, and this, I, this is where I really want to anchor us in today on this Mother's Day, right? And I, I didn't direct this towards mothers, but I know that there's some times where you just need a mental health day, right? Because it's been so busy, so chaotic, or you need a mental health week or whatever. But I want us to be healthy in our minds, and this is where it starts. He says, every thought... An action of your life speaks of allegiance to God or to Satan. Both are empowered by your agreement. Renewing your mind means learning to recognize what comes from hell and what comes from heaven and agreeing with heaven. This is the only way you'll complete your divine assignment. Remember, you have a purpose. Everything that God created has a purpose. So your divine assignment. God designed your mind to be one of the most supernaturally powerful tools in this universe. But it needs to be sanctified and yielded to the Holy Spirit so that you can carry out His designs, His creative ideas, and His plans for your everyday life. Every one of us has an allegiance to something. That's why Paul says, keep your mind on the things above, not the things below. And they're both empowered by the agreement. It's just, what are we choosing to focus on? 
My hope is, is that your mind is turned towards the heavenly things, towards the things that God speaks, the things that God um, puts into your life. You begin to move in that way. You begin to agree with those things. Because when we begin to agree with the things that God wants to do and he wants to see done on this earth, then the possibilities are limitless. Limitless. God wants you to have the mind of Christ. He has given you the mind of Christ. You see, this week for me, like it's been a reminder when my mind gets off, maybe the thing I need to do is open up the book of Psalms and I just need to continue to read through it so that I can see the, high, the valleys and I can see um, the hills and I can, I can see how people were depressed at some times and then super excited other times. But I can see how the psalmist comes back to this place of keeping their minds focused in on God and understanding and recognizing that He is everything that they need. And there's one passage, though, that God brought me to this week that was unlike any other. And it's in Lamentations. If you don't know Lamentations, it's a lament of Jeremiah, who's a prophet. Jeremiah is probably known best for the the scripture that was, for for, um, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to hammer you, plans to give you hope and a future, right? And this, this... prophet is speaking to the people in the time of captivity in Babylon and so like it's it's just a rough time and right before this section in Lamentations 3 you just see how just down he is and how just feels like nothing's happening nothing's working and he gets to this place and this is the place where I want us to get to today if you don't remember anything else today remember Lamentations 3 21 and it simply says this but this I call to mind When your mind is off, what are the things that you call to your mind? What are the things that you're choosing to remember? What are the things that you've recorded? What are the things that you need to like go, God, this is what you've done. This is who you are. What are those things? He says, but this I call the mind and therefore I have hope. And then there's this little like pause in the middle of this for a minute and it changes. These are the things that kind of surround me, God. These are the things that I remember in the midst of all this, that your steadfast love, O Lord, never ceases, that your mercies never come to an end, that they are new every morning. And you know why? Because great is your faithfulness. You wake up every day and you choose to continue to remain faithful to me, even when I have been faithless, even when I have turned away from you. You meet me there every day. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. What's that saying? You have everything you need in him. Everything you need. And then there's just another little pause. And there's this little hidden meaning in this pause. It's just like there's this picture, this pictograph of this, Greek, or this Hebrew letter. And it's, it's kind of this um, jar. And if you can imagine it, this jar has like a rim that kind of is inverted instead of going out. So you're not pouring stuff out of it. It's kind of built to kind of keep some things in. But inside of it, you find these hidden things that are really good, right? And he goes in and he says this in verse 25, the Lord is good to those who wait in him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that the one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke of his youth. He's saying he's good. Even in the middle of all of it, even in the confusion, even when we feel like we're struggling, even when we feel like we can't go on another minute, he says, remember this, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. He says, I call to my mind, therefore I have hope. We need to have that thing inside of us so that we can meditate it on it day and night, so that we can recall, so we can call to our minds so that we can have hope. What are those things? What are the things that you remember? If you don't have those things, you're missing out on it. And I guarantee you're like James says, a double-minded man who's unstable in all he does. Like you need to set your mind on the things of heaven, not the things below. And here's my challenge to you. If you begin to memorize and you begin to recognize all the things that God is doing and has done in your life, it will radically change your life. Remember, David said it this way and so clearly, The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. What is he saying? He's like, in the shepherd, there's not a single thing that you lack. And so we can go through all kinds of things. We can sit at a table in the presence of our enemies and feel completely good. We can be provided for even in areas where we feel like there's no nourishment at all. Is everything you need. I call to my mind, therefore I have hope. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything. 
thing I need. Isaiah says it this way in Isaiah 26, 3 through 4. And this is where I want to leave you today. You will keep in perfect peace all those who trust you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. All those who direct and redirect their minds to you over and over and over again. And here's why. Trust in the Lord always because the Lord God is an eternal rock. He is a firm foundation that never can be shaken. What are you thinking about? What are you meditating on? What has control of your mind? Is it the things above or the things below? Today, the invitation to you is simply to set your mind on things above and not things below. And like Jeremiah in his lament to say, but no matter what's going on, I call to my mind and therefore I have hope that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, that His mercies are new every morning because great is His faithfulness. If you can just remember those things, it will change the way that you think. Your mind will be made, your, your mind will be made new, it will be renewed. And watch as everything in your life begins to change. Now here's the thing. Today we could have went into the different effects that your physical health and your spiritual health has on your mind. We can, we can talk about the foods that you eat and, and how it correlates to like not being able to think clearly and do all these things. We can talk about all that. But here's what I want you to see. Just as we read in that quote, we all come into agreement with something, either God or the enemy. And so my hope and my prayer is this, as we focus in on heaven, so we focus in on the things above that everything below begins to find its place in him because here's the thing you need to understand you have the mind of christ and because you have the mind of christ you have a different perspective and that perspective is one of truth right because you have the mind of christ you're reassured that you have his presence everywhere you go and because you have the mind of christ the mind of christ focuses on new life not the old things not the things that you keep wanting to get drugged down by because you can't get past, but he's talking about new life, that you're a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And most importantly, the mind of Christ also reminds us that you are worthy. You're worth everything that Christ paid. So today, what will you set your mind on? Things below or the things above? Because I believe if you begin to set your mind on the things above, I believe that the thoughts that you have will begin to radically change. That your emotions would begin to radically change because of the way that you think. Today, what do you need to do? What things do you need to set right? Maybe for you, you just take a, a, a little note card and you write down even just Lamentations 3, 21 through... Um, 27 and you just begin to put that somewhere and you you remember it over and over again so that you can do as J Jeremiah says and call to mind so that you can have hope whatever you need to do begin to do those things practically but the most practical thing you can do is something we talked about at the very beginning in our spiritual health we can remember spiritual health is a hinge in which everything else hangs I told you the word of God reading the Word of God, remembering, memorizing different promises of God are so important to my mental health today. I believe that things will radically change if we put Him first. Would you pray with me? So Father, I thank You that today You paid the price so that we can have renewed mind. We don't have to continue to live with the negative thoughts. We don't have to continue to speak negatively to ourselves. We don't even continue to have to listen to the world around us, but we can set our minds on the things above and hear your promises and hear your thoughts about us. And God, we know that that has the power to change us radically. And not only that, but change the environment and the world and the atmosphere around us, God. God, you want to do amazing things, and I believe that it starts in getting our, perspective, our minds right, how we see things right. So God, we fix our minds, we direct and redirect our minds to you and to your purposes for our lives. So today, God, I thank you for the redeeming work that you're doing in our minds. God, today you are setting captives free. 
Those that have lived by lies for so many years, God, today you're setting them free and you're helping them to understand who they are in Christ. Today, God, God, you're reminding us again that you are so faithful and you are so good. So you meet us each and every day with your love and your kindness and your mercy. So, Father, thank you for your great and precious promises. May we hold on to those things and may they be the thing that we put our hope in because they're the words that you spoke, because you have a history and we can see it from past, present, and even into the future. So, God, I thank you that you have redeemed and renewed my mind today. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll give you all, give you all of my worship. Fall fire, fall fire, fall, come consume it. I'll give you all, give you all of my worship. Fall fire, fall fire, fall, come consume it. I'll give you all, give you all of my worship. Let's pray. Lord God, we, we look to you. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We honor you today, and I just ask that you would be with every single person who is watching and listening. Lord, we just ask that you would draw them closer to you. And we pray this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. So today, before you go on and you head off into the different things that you have going on for Mother's Day or whatever else you have going on today. I want you to just take a moment. I want you to write down at least one scripture, one promise from God's word that you can hold on to this week, that you can call to your mind so that you can have hope in whatever situation you're in, so that you can change the way that you think. Remember, we want to direct and redirect to keep our minds focused in on what God is doing and who God is and how faithful he's been in our lives. Today, I hope that you've been challenged through God's word. If you joined us today and you're new, we'd love just to stay in contact with you. And you can do that by just filling out this digital form um, by scanning this QR code. Or maybe you're watching today and you just need prayer. Maybe the enemy is just tormenting your mind and you just, you need someone to pray with you. This morning, if you wanna reach out to us, you can reach out to us by texting 517-917-0415 and just texting your name and your request and, and today or someday this week someone will get a hold of you and, and just maybe call you and have some time just praying for you over the phone or maybe in person but don't do this alone we're excited to see what happens as we step out and we begin to do life differently as we live life um, the way that God has called us to live and so today though set your minds on things above not things below and watch how things begin to get reordered in your life thanks for joining us this morning we hope to see you back here next week either online or in person remember in person we have two services nine o'clock and ten thirty we hope you'll join us for one of those but anyways we'll see you back here next week